So resumes refers to the ability to cope up with whatever life throws at you. Speaking very genuinely, right? So as we all know, it's not a bed of roses, right? We face good times as well as bad times. Times we feel like we can't do it anymore. We we genuinely have a give up attitude. Okay, right? So some people are knocked down by these challenges, but they return as a stronger person, as a more solid person. If they are like I'm having this situation, I'm struggling in this situation. Maybe I'll I'll be brought down by this situation, but at the end, I will emerge as a person who takes something back home from the situation in a positive way. Who grows up? Who grows as a person from the situation? Learns from the situation. Basically, people. Basically, it is our ability to cope and recover from setbacks. We are coping and also recovering from setbacks. Whatever life is throwing at us, good, bad, worse, everything. So we might feel like people with resilience, people with these attributes, they might not, uh, they might feel, they might not feel moments of anger, moments of depression or anxiety. So people with resilience do not. Experience less distress, anxiety, or grief, or whatever. Instead, they use healthy coping mechanisms to deal with these situations. Right? So, they use coping mechanisms that will invite growth and strength in them. Now, what is coping? When we are talking about resilience, we must know what is coping. We are not going into greater details. But I'm just going to give you a like a brief idea of what is coping. So basically, we have heard this term in day-to-day life. Right? Like I'm sure all of us have heard this term coping, but we don't know what it really means. Coping is basically a you know phenomenon which we use to overcome situations in life, right? There are two general types of coping coping skills. One is problem based coping. The other one is emotion based coping. Now, when we hear the word problem, what is the opposite of problem? Solution, right? When we hear the word problem, we we feel like we have to come up with a solution. So, problem based coping is helpful when you need to change situations, perhaps removing the stressful thing from your life. The thing that's creating the problem in your life, if we just, you know, take that thing out from our life, then the problem won't be there anymore, right? So there are a few causes that create. Maybe there are a few points that usually causes resilience, right? Some say that it, you know, we can imbibe that genetically, but again, it is a very controversial topic and it's still under study. So, how to build resilience is like the main part of what I'm speaking right now, right? So, I'm having some points, some back strategies to build resilience, right? These are only not written just for the sake of it. They are science backed. So, the first point is change the narrative, right? When something bad happens, we often we leave that that situation that moment again and again in our head you know and when we relive that situation in our head we are reliving the pain as well of that situation right this process is called rumination something happened and we are thinking of it constantly again and again and not only thinking we are uh, going through that same emotion that same negative emotion again and again and we are doing, doing this to ourselves no one no one else is responsible for this so the practice of expressive writing expressive writing can move us forward by helping us gain new insights of the challenges in our lives so basically it involves free writing continuously for about 15 to 20 minutes about an issue exploring the deepest thoughts and feelings around it we like many of us have this practice, rather than speaking as a phone, we are comfortable texting, right? Because sometimes we feel what we cannot usually express verbally, we can write that down in a very structured way, okay? In writing, the researchers suggest that you are forced to confront ideas one by one and give them structure. What we can't confront while talking to someone if we write it down, 
be ourselves you what we can tell ourselves if we write that down we are exploring some aspects which we don't usually and giving them a structure okay which we need to new perspectives we are actually crafting our own life narrative and gaining a sense of control over there we are exploring different aspects like this can happen this can happen i might feel this way i might feel this way this will be the result of feeling this way so we are exploring a lot of things and gaining a sense of control over ourselves the second one would be like finding silver lining okay so <coughs> finding silver linings invites us to call an upsetting experience to our mind right something some experience which is not a good one according to us okay and list three positive things about it for example for example we had a fight with our friend right so it's generally not a very good experience that we feel so what we will do we will find three points that you know that is positive about it some important issues into the open and allow uh, us you to learn something from that suppose i am having a fight with my friend because of some some there is some topic about that and then we find like thank god we talked about it now i know how you feel now i know how i feel about the situation now i know how can we can how we can come back to a you know joint conclusion and work on this right overcoming a fear is designed to help with our everyday fears that get in the way of our life you know for example Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 scared of lizards. Okay, so yeah, or I'm scared of public speaking, right? We can't talk ourselves out from such fears, right? If if I am in uh, in front of a lizard, I can't say I am not scared. I am not scared. I won't touch the lizard. I love a heart attack. I can't do that, right? So instead, we have to tackle that emotion directly. How do we do that? For example. Expose your, uh, yourself to what scares you. What are small doses? If like to be public speaking, if I'm scared of public spe- speaking, but I am doing it, I am taking small steps, taking baby steps, don't take a drastic step that will affect you in a negative manner. Okay, small doses basically. Or you know, rather than uh, as I told you, giving a post in a small wedding, in a small get together, where you get to speak. Right, not in big office conferences or you know big job interviews. Not nothing that directly. Third one would be practicing self compassion. Right. Basically, you know, there is also one exercise which I feel is like super super valid. It is how would you treat a friend? This is the name. So, if your friend was in this particular situation, what would you, you know? How would you guide her? How would you motivate her? Why aren't you doing the same thing when you are in that same situation? You should be like more considerate about yourself, right? So this is, I think, a very very solid point. Like, how would you treat your friend? You treat yourself that way. Like, why am I so harsh on myself? Like, what would happen if I want? What would be my suggestion for my friend if she was he or she was in this situation? Next point would be cultivate forgiveness. In our lives, we face a lot of situations where somebody has done something to us, you know, uh, whether consciously or not very consciously. We try to just hold on to that feeling for really long, you know, and we try to nurture that feeling here and there. Like I hate that person. I can't bear the sight of that person. Research suggests that cultivating forgiveness could be beneficial for your mental and both physical health. Letting go of forgiveness does not necessarily mean you are, you know, completely fine with what the person has done to you or what the situation that the person has formed for you. You're completely fine with that. You have forgotten that. That's not the case. It doesn't mean like letting the offender off the hook or even reconciling with them. You know, you are friends again. You are having a great bond again. That's not possible. Even if you try that, that won't be completely true. You are not being true to yourself. Last point that we need to talk about is like we all maybe we all practice, we all have heard about this is meditation.